favorite things about working in education is that we have opportunities for a fresh start all year long. You don't just have to make changes and adjustments at the beginning of a new school year. You can make those changes at the beginning of a new semester, a new nine weeks, a new month, a new week. There's always opportunities for us to take a look at those classroom procedures and decide what might need a few tweaks or adjustments. Today I'm talking about something that can always be improving in your classroom and that is your math instruction. Today we're going to look at your math centers and I'm going to share four centers you need and four centers you definitely can get rid of. Think about when you can implement these changes and make those moves to improve your math instruction for you and your students. First, let's talk about math centers you need. These are ones that we think are so important to have in your classroom. Now, I'm not going to give you this is the specific center and this is how you have to do it. I'm talking more about categories of centers that are so important to help your students learn and grow. My first category is a center that focuses on a spiral review. Now, this might look really different in everyone's classrooms, depending on your grade level and your students' needs, and we want to encourage you to make decisions for your centers based on those things. What kind of work can your students handle? What kind of depth within a standard can students do? When you're planning with centers, you want to make sure that it's things that students can do really successfully, both independently and in maybe a small group, because the idea here is that your students are working on these centers while you are pulling those small groups. So category number one we're talking about is your spiral review. Your spiral review center should be one that focuses on previous skills that you've already covered with your students. This really helps to build that independence piece and I run my spiral review as my independent work center. By running spiral review as my independent work center, it means my students aren't having to interrupt every other second to ask for clarification on how to do a skill. It also means that they're not going to be practicing the skill incorrectly and then you're going to have to go back and reteach. They've already seen your instruction on this skill. So maybe you've just wrapped up your fraction unit and that means your spiral review station is going to continue practicing those fraction skills that you have just finished covering in your whole group instruction. Spiral review should be a big part of your math work because we want to make sure students are continuing to see those skills and practice what they need to be successful within those skills. So if you don't already, make sure you think about adding a spiral review center into your math work. The second center you want to make sure you have running in your classroom is a math center that focuses on math fact fluency. We think it is so important for your students to become proficient in addition and subtraction fact fluency, and if it's appropriate for your grade level, multiplication and division fact fluency. When students are fluent in their facts, it makes all of the other math skills that much easier, and it helps to cut down on unnecessary errors within those skills. I tell my students all the time, the number one mistake you're going to make in my classroom is going to be a counting error. If you're really fluent within your math facts, it helps to cut down on those errors. That's why a center that's a huge part of my math rotation every week is a fact fluency center. I always want to make sure that my fact fluency center is really engaging for my students and challenging them to work within their facts. Just writing down facts over and over and over again is not really going to help with the fluency. Maybe automaticity, but students aren't going to be able to take and apply those facts in the mathematical classroom setting. That's why I love to play games and do different activities with my students within that fact fluency center. This bundle of free fact fluency games are my absolute favorite and my students love to play these. Center idea number three is not actually a physical center at all, but it is an idea that you need to keep in the back of your mind whenever you're planning centers for your students. And that is differentiation. We know all of our students have different needs and different skill levels, and that needs to be considered within your math center work. Think about ways that students can do the same activity just to different levels of understanding to match where they are as mathematicians. Differentiation needs to be a part of your math centers every single day. Along with differentiation, my fourth idea for you for centers is another one that's just that, an idea. Think about ways you can incorporate student choice into your centers. Maybe you give them three center activities to choose from. They're going to do all of them eventually, but they get to pick the order they do them in. Maybe you let them choose where they work in the classroom or what kind of writing utensil they get to use while they are working. 
Student choice is so powerful. It's an amazing motivator for our students. And it is something that we always want you to have in mind while you're planning centers. Now that we've talked about the shoulds, let's focus on the should nots. Now, whenever we talk about should nots, I always like to remind people we've all done these things. We've all implemented these in our classroom. And that's why we know they are not sustainable, they are not helpful, and they're not what we should be focusing on within our math centers. We aren't up here on a pedestal telling you, I've never done this and you shouldn't either. No, I'm here telling you, I've done all of these things and I know it is not the way to run a successful, peaceful, and effective math centers. Don't worry, we're all human around here. My first category of should nots when it comes to math center is that you should not have math centers that change every single week. If you do this and you do it well, bless you and bless your copy machine. I don't know how you have the time to change math centers every week. Save yourself the hassle and plan math centers for chunks of time in the classroom. I like to run the same math centers over the entire length of my unit of instruction to save myself the hassle of switching things out, prepping things every single week. When you're using centers that change every single week, you are killing so much of your time. Make your life a little bit easier and plan centers that can be used over multiple weeks of instruction. Tip number two of things that should not be happening in your math centers is you should not be trying to make your math centers match an acronym. Does it look really nice on a bulletin board? Yes, it does. Is it necessarily what's best for your students and their needs? No, it is not. If your students are really struggling with one of your centers and you're keeping it just because it's already on the wall or it's already part of your PowerPoint slides, we're telling you it's okay to ditch the acronym. Plan your centers and what students are doing them to meet their needs. I promise your bulletin board is going to be okay. My third should not is one that we have all done before and it is another one that is truly exhausting. Much like planning centers that change every week, another should not are centers that are different for every single group. I don't know about you, but I had a whole year where it was like, here's the red team and here's the red team's four centers and the red team's different then the yellow team and the yellow team's four centers and then we have the green team that can sometimes choose from the red teams y'all i was driving myself into the ground for math centers and that's not how it's supposed to be instead of differentiating entire activities for each group look at ways that you can differentiate one activity for each group maybe they're completing a different number of problems maybe they're having to draw different styles of mathematical models to represent their work Maybe one group gets to complete it as partner work and one group does it as independent practice. Differentiate one activity for each group instead of planning different activities for all of your groups working in math centers. Fourth and final category for math center should nots is one that I'm currently facing in my classroom right now. I have entire drawers of resources that I cannot use because they are seasonal. And last year, I taught place value at Halloween. And this year, I taught place value in August. When you use seasonal resources and then your scope and sequence changes, it then means that all of that hard work and labor that went into prepping those centers and activities, you can't use that again. I can't use my Easter Bunny fractions resources when I'm doing fractions in December. Shy away from seasonal math center activities because it means as your scope and sequence changes or maybe as your students need changes and you're having to adjust that schedule, you're not gonna be tied to using those resources at certain times of the year. While my candy corn place value resources are really sad that they didn't get action this year, I definitely have learned my lesson and am no longer using seasonal center activities. If you're doing any of the should nots, don't worry. We all are, myself included. We're here to tell you that it's a-okay if you're doing the should nots, but we wanna encourage you to focus on the shoulds. How can you incorporate those four center ideas and suggestions into your classroom? If you're looking for more math content from us, don't worry, we have plenty. I have an entire YouTube playlist of all of our most popular math content just waiting and ready to go. If you're looking for more direct instruction from us on our math rotations and our math instruction, how we pull small groups, how we plan for centers, I want to encourage you to check out our Not So Wimpy Teacher Math Masterclass. Signups are open right now, and this is an amazing resource of self-paced teacher instruction on how to run an amazing math workshop in your classroom. 
this is one of my favorite things that I get to share with educators because I have completed the course and I have to tell you, it changed how I teach math in my classroom and I'm sure it's going to make a difference for you as well. If you're looking to sign up for the math masterclass, I'm going to have the links up in the cards and down in the description box for you. I hope you liked my four shoulds and my four should nots of math center work in your classroom. I know it's time for me to just throw away the drawer of seasonal math supplies and make sure that I'm making my own life a little bit easier while I'm planning for math centers. Remember, if you're looking for more resources, I have plenty for you down in the description box. Make sure you hit subscribe. We put out new videos every single week and we would love to continue to know from you down in the comments what else you want to see from us. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and we hope you have a not so wimpy day. Bye!